Hi everyone, uh, my name is Jan. I'm software engineer at Google and uh, Envoy senior maintainer. Today's talk is a little bit on the technical side, uh, maybe a little bit boring side, but I wanted to give an update on the changes that are happening in one of the uh, Envoy key components and specifically in the component that validates HTTP protocol. So before we go any, you know, before we dive deeper, I wanted to give the, the present state. Uh, so what, what's happening today within Envoy? And this was mentioned in the, you know, the previous talk, Envoy uses codecs to take the bits and bytes that it gets from the network connections and turn them into the protocol elements. In case of HTTP, it's uh, header map, body, trailers, sort of like typical things that the HTTP application expect. And uh, we have three different HTTP versions, and we source codecs from three different vendors for those. And the validation today is part of the codec. So we have uh, three different versions of HTTP validations, or even three different visions of how HTTP validation should be performed. Uh, so what are the problems with this, you know, with this situation? Well, first of all, the validation is not consistent across different HTTP versions. Uh, this can be, you know, maybe annoying at times you, uh, when a request that is accepted over HTTP 1 is rejected over HTTP 2, or it can actually lead to fairly serious consequences, uh, such as when, for instance, a codec allows a carriage return in the header value, uh, this can be abused to smuggle requests when Envoy is configured to proxy across protocol versions, which is a very common scenario. And we have a total of seven CVEs that are one way or another relate to the, uh, to the inconsistencies in the validation, uh, in HTTP validation. So it's a uh, Validation code is difficult to understand and comprehend. It takes, you know, it, it's a high cognitive load on developers to go and spelunk in the vendor code to find out what's wrong or how things work. And uh, validation cannot be easily modified. It's possible, but, you know, very impractical. And we consistently get requests such as, uh, can we support UTF-8 in the path values? It's maybe not stand strictly compliant with the standard, but it's, you know, it's a common feature in a lot of implementations, so people, people want something like this in Envoy, and we can't deliver, easily deliver something like this. Uh, it's very, uh, the, the observability of protocol errors is very poor today, uh, partly because codecs surface very generic errors, right? You know, invalid content length, but why is it invalid? Is it negative, is it zero, is it too, too high, too low? Uh, very often, you know, you, you have to debug using something like TCP dumps, which is, uh, you know, very difficult, very time consuming. Um, and also, uh, today is very, w w the, the current situation, it's very difficult to uh, apply Envoy's policy of protecting all of the user visible or, you know, protocol validation changes with runtime flags. You know, we, we often get those changes from vendors. Uh, sometimes we might not even notice them, whether they, you know, they might not even be, do be documented in the release notes, and uh, it caused disruption to the existing traffic in the past when we updated the codec. Uh, so our answer to this is universal header validator, and in simple terms, we are taking that validation out of the codex, and we're moving it into the one centralized component, uh, which is, you know, as part of the Envoy code base, uh, Envoy now owns protocol validation. So what's, what, what, what is specifically changing? Uh, the first thing that's gonna change is that we're gonna get consistent validation across all protocol versions. Uh, as I mentioned, it's now an Envoy component. Uh, the changes there don't depend on uh, codec vendors. We can, you know, do them, make them runtime flag protected. Uh, all these good things, you know, we, we know we can audit. Uh, it's very easy, it's much easier to understand now. It's also an extension, so anyone can go and modify the default behavior. Uh, we sort of, you know, one of the possible, uh, for instance, one of the possible extensions is to make 
Envoy fully compatible in terms of protocol validation with Nginx or HA proxy to allow more seamless migration from one proxy to another. And also we get a much improved observability uh, because the, the uh, elements that caused protocol errors can be emitted into the access log. So you can actually see, you know, what's, what, what's wrong with my request? Why, why am I getting protocol errors? There are some limitations. Uh, we weren't able to cleanly extract validation from existing codecs, uh, or we call them legacy codecs already. Uh, so it only works with the newer codecs which we sourced from the open source library Kish, where we work with developers to uh, allow us to cleanly disable validation in the codecs and allow it to, to move to the universal header validation. So deployment. Uh, for deployment, one of the key requirements was to prevent any disruptions to the existing traffic. So what we want what we want to happen is when you update, when we update Envoy to the uh, universal header validator, there will be no, no changes. Uh, it will first be running in the, fully com in the full compatibility mode with the existing or legacy behavior. Uh, so it will be turned on and ideally there, not, nothing, nothing will change. So in order for us to ensure that there are no changes or you know, fully uh, test this compatibility mode with built differential fuzzer, which we found to be very you know, efficient comparing codecs side by side, what behavior they have. So we're fairly you know, certain that there would be no unexpected behavioral changes. We don't want to stay in that compatibility mode forever. I mean, our goal is to move into a better, consistent, more compliant world. And uh, so we'll start to turn off legacy features off gradually. And uh, the way we're gonna do it is to first evaluate the traffic, the effects on the traffic at some of the major Envoy operators. Uh, probably some of those changes will be you know, freebies because nobody really relies on, on these uh, legacy behaviors. Some of them may be more complicated, but this is a path uh, ahead for us to, um, to uh, bring it into the sort of a new, more consistent, uh, more compliant world. So the, the full list of behavioral changes are, is right now in this kind of inconvenient GitHub issue. We will surface them in the documentation, in Envoy documentation, where it will be easy to see what are the things we're planning to change, you know, which are the things that are turned on right now, which are the things turned off. So for configuration, we don't expect like any configurational changes needed. You know, Envoy will take your existing protocol validation options and move them to UHV. But if you have to change something, there is a new configuration option in HTTP Connection Manager for downstream connections and cluster protocol options for upstream connections. So for availability, uh, when I submitted this talk, I fully expected that it will be available, but then life happened, and so now the availability is at the end of uh, 2023. And uh, that's the end of my talk. Thanks, Jan. <clears throat> so we'll do questions for all three talks at the end, if there's time, which there may not be. So I'm Josh Morantz. I'm... Um, uh, I work as an Envoy maintainer. I'm also managed load balancing in the Envoy platform teams at Google. Um, so, a uh, brief rundown of what the admin console is. If you already know it, I have a couple of new things to show you. If you don't, this is a good uh, basic um, overview. So, it's, a, uh, it's an interface that lets you query the state of the running Envoy server. You can also modify some aspects of the server. Um, it has basic uh, interfaces. You can access it by curl or wget, or there's also a web interface. Um, so we'll show some basic admin features and how to configure it. So the basic configuration that most people would do is to configure an HTTP uh, port by which you can access the admin console. Um, this is actually a little bit risky because this does give write access into the server, so you probably don't want to do this um, on a port that's exposed to the internet, for example, so be careful. Um, another more secure option is 
um, to, to use the C++ API, if you're modifying Envoy's uh, binary, you can hook into the C++ API, and I have pointers on how to do that. And that way you can go through your own secure mechanism um, that is logged and ACLed and so on. <clears throat> you can also remove um, the admin interface entirely uh, at compilation time when you build Envoy, or you can disable the HTML interface if you just want the curl interface. So curl is pretty simple. You just curl the port you configured um, if you curl slash help. Uh, it shows you what the commands are. You can get, for example, um, some stats. You can filter them. Or you can modify the server, which you would do with a post. Browser UI is kind of similar. Um, you bring up the root page, and it gets you um, a pretty primitive user interface showing you what all the commands you can do. Um, the, uh, the endpoints that only observe server state are HTTP gets, and they look like links. The endpoints that uh, can modify server state are drawn as buttons, and they are and they issue posts. So I'll go into stats. It's probably the most interesting one, certainly the one that I've spent the most time on. Um, you can toggle a checkbox to include only the stats that are written since the server was started. That's usually what you want to do because there's frequently a lot of stats that don't show up. There's a, a regex filter that you can use. Um, you can also specify what format you want. Um, HTML, uh, JSON, text, and Prometheus are options here. We're going to focus on HTML, which is mostly like text, um, with a, except that it lets you kind of incrementally modify the, the features. You can also filter by stat type. You can have just, uh, you can have all the types or filter for one of them. And then histograms have actually four different display modes that you can use. And I'm going to show you the one that's not default, but it's called detailed. So this is what you get when you hit the, the stats button that I had shown earlier. Um, you get all of the stats that have mod been modified recently that match the regex. <clears throat> and the HTML uh, mode shows you a detailed view of the histogram just to dive into a little bit about what you're seeing. So this only happens in detailed mode. If you use any of the other modes, then you get a textual rendering of the histogram just showing you kind of numbers on a line. It's a little, I find it a little bit hard to interpret. Um, for all of Envoy's life, it's actually kept a ton of detail in the histograms, but not really exposed it to users, but the detailed entry lets you see them. So. <clears throat> Uh, this shows you that this particular bucket that's highlighted in yellow, um, it's uh, an interval that starts at 66 milliseconds and ends at just before 67 milliseconds. Um, it shows you that there's 10,000 of those uh, have been counted since the server started. Um, it shows you that 976 of them have been counted since the last kind of five second polling interval. And uh, this happens to be the P50 mark. So this is the 50th percentile. Another feature that was added recently is active HTML. So one of the things that might be interesting if you're running an Envoy server and something starts behaving strangely and you don't know what, you don't know where to focus your logs yet because you don't know what's acting strangely. So you can turn on active HTML mode and it will um, give you a view that of stats that are sorted by how many times they've changed since you started this mode. So, um, so uh, if um, some subsystem is behaving interestingly, usually there'll be a stat that bumps up and you can start, start seeing it at the top and then you can start focusing your logging on that. Um, another view that's interesting is the config dump. Config dumps come out in JSON, and you can see the raw JSON on the right. Um, one thing I've noted is that if you want to see a more hierarchical view of the configuration dump, um, Firefox actually shows you a hierarchical JSON viewer by default, so that's something I'd, you might not try if you don't think of it, uh, but I find that pretty useful. Um, so those are all th um, features in Envoy where you can observe aspects of the server. You can also change the server behavior. This is the uh, logging control. Oops. Um, so here I've changed the logging, uh, default logging level to be trace, and you can do this while the server is running. 
and you get a lot more output. Um, in a minute, Boteng will show you a lot more detail about how you can zoom in more carefully than at the component level. Um, I want to circle back on security. The admin port must be protected at the OS, network, or firewall layer. If you configure an HTTP port, it's your responsibility to keep that port protected. Um, and the secure alternative is to use the C++ server. So I wanted to leave you with uh, some notes, and the slides are up uploaded, so you can grab these there. Um, the console documentation has all the information which I just shared. Um, if you are interested in contributing to it, there's a lot of room for improvement in the console, and there's links to the source code there um, and the API access, which I showed you earlier. Um, and there's uh, um, an example um, that Matt Klein did of adding a new extension, a new admin endpoint as an extension. Um, that's useful for, that's for the tap filter. Um, and more detail about the stats design as well. So I will now hand it over to Boteng, who will show you a lot more about detailed uh, file level logging. Thanks, Josh, for the comprehensive intro to the admin interface. Uh, so hello, everyone. I'm Boteng Yao, uh, a software engineer from Google's Envoy team. I'm also an active uh, contributor to the Envoy. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about the logging system in Envoy. I will focus more on the fan green logger. Uh, in Envoy, which is different from the component logger. So uh, what is what is Fangrain uh, logger? The short answer is it is a log, log management system that can control the log level uh, by C++ source level, uh, source file, uh, rather than the subsystem, which is the component. And I also talk about some basic usage of the Fangrain logger from the admin API and provide some uh, performance insights for that. Uh, so right now, Envoy has uh, two log uh, management system. Uh, one is component, another one is uh, fine-grained logger. So let's take a look at what uh, uh, component loggers like. And right now, Envoy has roughly 60 component uh, loggers, and this is managed by the uh, logger loggable uh, ID for example, we have the admin, client, connection, uh, and, and so on. And one thing is, it cannot, uh, it's, it's, right now it's not extensible for extensions. Uh, with the fangrain logger, we provide fender granularity uh, to the uh, source file level, and that means uh, we will have uh, each logger for every uh, active files. The active means uh, the log entry is executed at least once. So, so let's take a look at so how to use how to do use how will we use that? The it's pretty simple and it's a command line option. Just uh, enable fan green logging. And I, one thing I need to mention is, is it is the either or relationship. We can only enable one log system, uh, and then uh, is Let's talk about the logging, uh, admin logging usage. We want to update the log level in runtime. Uh, the first usage, like we can list all active uh, loggers and through the post right now, it is post not get. So we can use a curl post to the uh, API uh, admin port uh, slash logging and it will list all the active logs uh, with the log level, the zero means trees. And like for critical, uh, it is file. And the second use case, like it can perform the file base name match to just the log level. The file base is like for this example, it's a TCP listener input or the UDP listener input, and it's a change to trace. And the second use case is like globe star match, and we can use the star uh, to match any characters for the file name, uh, for example, uh, like uh, slash network slash star, it will match that uh, file tree, and all these matched files will be debug level for this. And the first use case is like the question mark. The question only match the uh, specific character for that. So we also support multiple settings, and we can use multiple update for a single curl 
uh, post request. And then uh, I need to mention that it is state of word update. And for each curl uh, request, uh, it will only update the matched file to the specific level, and all other unmatched files are uh, the default level, for example, is info. So here's another actual uh, example. Like, typically, uh, Envoy defaults to info logging in production uh, environment. So what happens if we have uh, actual incidents for your HTTP filter, and, and we only care about that uh, files, specific files. Uh, with component logger in high possibility, we can only like post the logging HTTP to trace, and then all the files under that log ID will be uh, logged. So, for example, uh, we got a lot of unrelated files and uh, for trace, but we only care about, for example, the uh, the last two lines effective client IP. So. Then, uh, with fan green logger system, and not, not it is either or, uh, uh, we can only use one of them, and we can uh, use another request and only match the effective client IP uh, to trace. Uh, for example, after this request, uh, we only display the specific files uh, log entries. <laughs> it's pretty useful, right? And then uh, I will talk about some performance insights. So the TLDR for performance, like uh, we got the, the Fangren logger system management, management system is slightly uh, better than the component system from the CPU performance. Uh, so there, uh, there are three setups. For example, the left two bars uh, are the logs, uh, are the log entries are not printed, and the middle two bars are uh, with 200 threads, and the right two bars are the uh, trace level logs. Uh, we will see the CPU process time and the real time for that. Uh, <coughs> sorry. So let's, the, the, the vertical uh, access is the time is nanoseconds. The, the, the lower the bar, the better, so time is uh, smaller, and, and uh, for lower security lines, uh, it, uh, all the three bars are same, so we can find more uh, speed tests from the uh, the link. is is in the Envoy repo. So more. So this is similar as the WeLock and Lock system uh, in Google, and it is still open sourced. Uh, and right now, Fangreen Logger is currently running uh, in Google. Uh, for global load balancers, so in both internal and external traffic. Uh, and also thanks uh, some discussion and contribution from Kevin and Princess17. Uh, and thank you. Any questions, uh, scan the QR. And I will, uh, Yan, for Yan and Josh, uh, 